Blessed Pentecost Sunday to you, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano just issued this letter in Italian minutes ago for the Feast of Pentecost, well, really for the Vigil of Pentecost, which used to be marked on the traditional calendar, but now in the present-day church, it's not really marked at all. Here, Archbishop Vigano invites us to fight and to fight with enthusiasm. I think you'll find this to be an edifying reflection for Pentecost Sunday, where we observe the coming of the Holy Ghost and how it illumined the hearts and the minds and lit a fire under the apostles in a very literal way for them to go and preach the gospel the world over, converting many souls in a very short amount of time, whose fire is still felt in the church today. Today we celebrate the Vigil of Pentecost, the ancient baptismal liturgy of this day, abolished with the reform of 1955, has recently been brought back into use by numerous communities that follow the Tridentine Rite, moreover with the permission of the Ecclesia Dei Commission. The reason for this decision can be attributed to the fact that the authors of the Orbdo Hebdomadae Sanctas Establishmentus of Pius XII are the same as those of the Rubricatium Instructum of John XXIII and of the Novus Ordo Missae of Paul VI. With a view to recovering the treasuries of the traditional rite, this rediscovery is therefore understandable, not only of the pre-1955 Holy Week, but also of the symbolic liturgy of Pentecost, called Easter of the Roses in memory of the ancient custom of dropping from the vault of our asked for a shower of rose petals, which were to represent the fiery tongues of the Holy Spirit. This still happens in the Basilica of Santa Maria ad Martires, the Roman pantheon. Its baptismal character recalls the Easter Vigil, so that the catechumens who had not received baptism on Holy Saturday, for example because they were not yet ready or sick, could be admitted before the neophytes during today's solemn function. This ancient rite contemplates the blessing of the sacred fountain and the conferring of the sacramental washing, and reminds us of the solicitude of the Holy Church, which is teacher in demanding the due preparation of candidates for baptism and mother in granting them another opportunity at the conclusion of the Easter season. The reading of the prophecies continues, according to Dom Geringer, an evident reference to Holy Saturday, with the double symbolism of our elder brother's celebrations of the time, which were fulfilled in the Christian Easter and Pentecost. Certainly the great Pius XII, towards whom we have a profound veneration, was not able to grasp in those first steps of the, the Renovo Liturgie, which began in the 1920s, the threat that would later appear evident with the so-called conciliar reform. It is for this reason that the recovery of the rites prior to 1955 does not in the least call into question his pontificate nor his love for the Roman liturgy. Rather, we can recognize the diabolical cunning with which the innovators acted, who in small steps undermined the priceless treasure of the Catholic faith. Instead of disclosing this patrimony, the fruit of centuries of harmonious development, they have found it more convenient to simplify them, demonstrating in this not only a mentality wholly alien to a true understanding of the divine liturgy, but also a substantial contempt for the holy people of God, wrongly considered incapable of nourishing themselves spiritually by drawing from it. But this, let it be clear, was still a pretext, an excuse for the active participation of the faithful, behind which was hidden the will to undermine the faith, the lex credendi, by tampering with its prayerful expression, the lex arandi. Ultimately, the innovators reveal their lack of trust in the action of the grace infused by the Holy Spirit, which also operates through the liturgy, and in man's ability to correspond to it. In their mentality, nothing must put us to rest. Nothing must represent an opportunity for improvement. Everything must be within everyone's reach. No treasure must be disclosed to those they consider mediocre and ignorant, which betrays their, their proud belief that they are superior to their flock. This presumptuous classism is not limited to the exterior, but also extends to interior matters, so that for them, ignorance of the faith, the indolent accommodation of morals, laziness and spirituality and asceticism, must be the rule for a mass that they have no desire to guide, to instruct, to admonish. Too much effort for those who don't first believe, don't love, don't hope. Too much effort for those who are busy building a church in their own image, considering the church of Christ and its liturgy old and unthinkable. For this reason, they depersonalize individuals and annihilate them in an assembly without a face and without a will on which to impose a horizontal vision devoid of supernatural yearning, in the certainty, which we also have before our eyes, that a rite that expresses another ecclesiological and doctrinal vision 
it would have ended up changing the faith of those who would have witnessed it. Conversely, the good shepherds are the first who, in the wake of tradition and in the constant and humble practice of what they preach, have the task of indicating great goals to great to the souls entrusted to them. Be holy as your Father is holy, our Lord exhorts us. And this holiness, which is made up of even silent heroism and generous abandonment to God's will, is the response to the grace, which makes possible for God what we would never be able to accomplish on our own. And today, with the conferral of holy confirmation on the young Gabriel, we have proof of this. The Lord who calls us to be children of the Eternal Father and living members of the Church through baptism makes us soldiers of Christ in the sacrament of confirmation, ready to fight the good fight. But he does not leave us alone in this trial. It provides us with spiritual weapons with which to face the enemy of our soul. The Holy Spirit gives us these very powerful weapons, free of charge, like everything that comes from God, precisely in confirmation and in all the sacraments, the armor of God, the belt of truth, the breastplate of justice, the sandals of preaching, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit, the training of prayer, the gymnasium of fasting and penance. Let us not be proud of what the Lord allows us to be, nor of the successes that we obtain thanks to him, but let us not be discouraged either by our failures, by our weaknesses, by the inexperience in handling these devices or the lack of dexterity in wielding them. Let us rather repeat what St. Paul says, I can do all things in him who gives me strength. In this solemn vigil which prepares us for the descent of the paraclete, let us invoke the Holy Spirit with the trust of one who knows with realism and humility his own weakness but also the infinite power of the Lord God of the arrayed armies, and that no less tremendous than ours, Augusta Condiete, Maria Santissima, Terribilis ut castrorum or eceris ordinaria. The spiritual warfare we wage against the world, the flesh and the devil, was won on the cross, where our Lord and God defeated the enemy, where the blessed seed of the woman, crowned with stars and clothed with the sun, crushed the head of the ancient serpent, she will know total victory at the end of time, when again the woman announced in Genesis and the fruit of her womb will defeat the Antichrist and Satan. We are in the midst of this apocal conflict. We have high ideals, great challenges, exciting duels to face. With God's help, the young Gabriel will also have some, whom the church enlists in her ranks as Milis Christi, providing him with all the spiritual equipment he needs, providing him with the care of confession, nourishing his strength and vigor with the supernatural food of the Most Holy Eucharist. Gabriel, strength of God, the Holy Spirit will also give you, as he has given and continues to bestow upon each of us his gifts, the sacred septenary, wisdom, intellect, counsel, fortitude, science, piety, fear of God. So let us not ourselves be discouraged by those who want us to be weak and unarmed, resigned and ignorant, in order to be better able to break down and win. Let us rather place all our hope in God, who calls us to the heroism of holiness, because he wants us at his right hand on the glorious day of victory, when he will make his enemies his footstool. Amen. Signed, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, on the 27th of May, on the eve of Pentecost. Clearly, Archbishop Vigano there was doing some a baptism and allowing a young person named Gabriel to enter the church, which is itself an incredible blessing for that young man, assuming it was a young man. So please pray for that otherwise unknown person named Gabriel, whom he was allowing to enter, which he was bringing into the church formally through baptism. A great honor for that person, I am sure. <laughs> and one wonders how someone can get Archbishop Vigano to, <laughs> you know, baptize their children for them. That is a that is, by the way, just a rhetorical question, not a real question. Anyway, you may be wondering why he framed this in the liturgy, because Archbishop Vigano has become, since uh, 2018, and when he really emerged on the on the scene in the resistance to Francis, he really became a rather militant advocate for the traditional liturgy and its full restoration and has very clearly become very aware of the origins of the Novus Ordo Missae and the men behind that who really undermine most of the claims of that liturgy. But anyway, it's Pentecost. I hope you found his words here to help light a fire for kindling that love of the liturgy and really the desire to keep a hold of the treasures of the church and to really stay close to the sacraments. Let me know what you thought of this in the comments, please. And like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help. So does sharing this on social media. That helps too. As always, pray for the church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria.